Hello Patreons. It's been a terrible, terrible week, I don't mind telling you. I've been, <coughs> listen, <coughs> sick, in bed, backwards and forwards with this virus for like two weeks, very over it. Um, so, but I still made a video because making videos is fun. Um, this video is actually for Arlen Rowe, who wrote in on my last Patreon post and asked me about project management. And I realised I've got a lot to say. And also, good excuse to get the old tripod out and do you a drawing. So this is my drawing of dependency mapping and why Gantt charts don't work. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so Gantt charts are great and they give you a comforting illusion that you're in control of what's going on. So if I was to go draw a Gantt chart of a book chapter or a, let's say a, a whole book proposal to make it more complicated, um, what would it look like? So we'd have probably some sort of three month stage here and I'll call that the proposal stage. And this is where you've got an idea and you fill in the publisher's template and you get accepted and at this point here, you've got a signed contract. So you sort of know that stage is finished. Then you've got this stage where you're, you know, are writing, inverted commas, because writing, as we know, is a back and forth process of sort of making things. So you could call this the making stage, but let's stay, um, stick with writing. We know this is finished when we deliver a manuscript. Okay, so this is just sort of milestone marker here. And then this phase, which goes on always longer than everyone wants it to, which is the editing and finishing stage. Um, and so in here, you're sort of working with the copy editor, um, you're chasing up, you know, copyright things. There's a lot going on in this editing and finishing phase. How do you know this is finished? Uh, you get an email from your publisher and they give you a due date for your book. Um, and, you know, well, only really know this is finished, but when the book is actually um, legit a thing, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Like, you can buy it. So then, you know, the whole process of writing a book is finished. And the thing with the Gantt chart is you can say, okay, this maybe takes you three months. Maybe this takes you six months. Maybe you allow three months for this and you're like, job done. You know, I can get this thing done in a year, no problem. But actually, what ends up happening is these points that you're wanting to hit, you know, these milestones just never seem to happen at the right time. Like you're always sort of pushing here and pushing here and pushing here and everyone's frustrated. And the frustration comes, look, this is inevitable. This stuff just happens. But the frustration often happens when people aren't communicating through the process. And this goes for a thesis, this goes for a book, this goes for any kind of pro project. Um, you need to know back here that actually you're not going to land here, you're going to land here. And you need to communicate back here that actually we need another month to finish this stage. And the problem is that people don't often realise that they're running behind until here and then they ask for a month and everyone's pissed off. And then it puts out this end schedule here, which is usually a pretty hard schedule. It's usually a factory kind of schedule with when it comes to a book. And so if this isn't going to be met, you need to know back here and you need to extend it out here. And this is all part of professional communication with the publisher. So why does this happen and how can we identify it earlier is one of the, the secret magic arts of project management. So what I like to do to think about this is to make myself a dependency map. So a dependency map is basically two things. It's a through line from idea through to book. Okay, we're starting here, we're going to end up here. And we've got some waypoints like we do in our Gantt chart. So we're going to have a point where we sign a contract. And we're going to have a point where we hand over a manuscript. Okay, so they're the key points. And these are the two points to track about whether you're going to happen on time. So what are the dependencies in this contract? By that I mean what has to happen 
from you, but more importantly, what has to come from other people? You can often control yourself. You know, you might just work later, put in a few weekends. You can manage the stuff to do with you, but often you can't make people work harder, work weekends and help you finish your stuff. So it's helpful to identify who these other parties are. So if we're talking about a contract here, you're going to have some discussion with a publisher. And that might be back and forth discussion with the publisher. And then you're going to have some sort of contract negotiation. And that might not be the publisher who is involved with that. Usually at some point, there's also an editor that's involved in that negotiation. In the meantime, down here, you are having to do market research, you know, to find out who and where the book should be sold, that kind of thing. And you also have to be doing some drafting of your ideas. Okay, so the publisher needs to be getting back to you regularly. And so does the contract, the editor who's doing the contract. You also need to be delivering this stuff in. Well, actually, you sort of need to be delivering that in there. And you need to be doing getting the drafting done by the contract date. So Every time that you experience a delay in email from any of these parties, this point is in doubt. And then we go through to this next stage. So you've negotiated the contract now, you've got contract to hand over. So you're gonna have some sort of feedback and that might be from the publisher themselves. Occasionally I've done that. Usually it's from other people. You'll having to be doing some drafting and some Sort of, you might have a team meeting, you might have, you know, critical friends, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so all that sort of has to sit along that timeline before handover can be reached. Okay, you might not do any of this, but I would suggest that your book won't be as good if you're not seeking feedback. You might be also presenting at conferences, you might be writing blog posts, you might be doing something, but there's some sort of feedback process there and it's good to make uh, time for it. Now, in this last bit between handover and the actual book being published, quite a lot goes on. So you're gonna get feedback from your publisher, um, you know, and they're the person who's sort of got oversight, but they're not in the details. You'll have feedback from your editor, they're the person managing all the details, and then you'll probably have a copywriter here too, and they're the person who's actually ac actioning everything on the manuscript. You'll work closely with this person, slightly less closely with this person. You probably have chatty chats with this person who's overseen the whole process. So if your copywriter's getting you stuff, you know, in here pretty early, you can respond. You gotta respond. And um, that process can go back and forth. So here the key dependency is your copywriter, really. If and they're usually on track because honestly. These days they're paid by the hour and they're really wanting you to just get this book out the door. So actually I've never had any trouble with professional copywriters in terms of um, uh, being a, a key dependency. The problem here is usually me, you know, I've got to respond to this copywriting feedback and I usually find this part, the detailed part, just hard to focus down on. And then I've got other other things that I'm having to cop, um, chase up here like copyright permissions, um, and all sorts of other other you know stuff that you know referencing that I just I hate I hate doing this stuff I just hate it it's just boring and detailed and it's not me but anyway uh, nose to the grindstone and all that so when we look at our dependency map we can see how much is getting left out in the Gantt chart now that little exercise alone is going to just help you identify the key problems and the key pain points. But you can, if you like, take it to the whole next level, if you want to, um, and map the two together. Now, I've got my own system here, which is a combination of a calendar and my dependency map. So what this looks like <clears throat> is um, it helps me sort of I start to identify who the key players in this process of bringing this thing into being will be and how I'm going to manage this through line. So I've still got my through line here. 
and I start here at idea and I end here at book. And in here, I need to get a publisher response. You know, so I need to sort of close out that dependency by at least a week before I want to hit this date. I know I need a week here in order to actually finish writing. Um, so down here, what I'm doing here myself is market research. Okay, and I'm also just doing drafting. Okay, so I need to finish my drafting by here, but actually I need to finish my drafting here because I've got to build in this response time for the publisher. And that means that I need to do my market research and all my other preliminary work back here. So I'll know straight away, I'll know by here, if I haven't met this to get to this, you know, to give them time to respond, I'll know here already that I'm late and that I'm not going to meet a contract date at the end of October as I would like to. So then all the timeline needs to be pushed out. Luckily, you're probably not nailing this date down. No one is until later on. But in the next phase, this is when you start to get this immovable deadline. So a bit of flex and stretch in this um, area is okay. But when we start to get in here, this is where things get dicey. So there's a feedback process here of external feedback. It might be from your editor, if you're lucky. It might be from other people. And you are drafting. Okay. So when you get to this handover, you've got to build in sufficient time to know how well that drafting process is going. So you need to have some word targets, I'm afraid. <laughs> and really, it gets right down to that. Um, what I tend to do is, is have a little sort of writing schedule and I'll have chapter by chapter and then I'll have, you know, stages of complete or not complete, which I showed in a, a previous video. And I think this is actually really important to track whether that drafting is actually happening because you can just fool yourself, right? Oh, I'll just work longer. I'm falling a bit behind. I need to just pull a few weekends and stuff. But honestly, you get to the weekend, you're tired. You're just not firing on all cylinders. Your partner wants to see you. This, you really have to be very diligent. And you need to say, okay, I need to have chapters one to three done by now. I need to have chapters one to uh, three to six done by now. I need to have worked on the conclusion and at least have everything in place. And if I'm not hitting this one, I'm not going to hit this one. I'm not going to hit this one. And if you are waiting for feedback, you've obviously got to build in feedback time. And this is where supervisors and students just go wrong all the time. The student thinks, oh, I can sort of hand something in. Here's my first chapter and they just expect immediate feedback from their supervisor and instead of getting immediate feedback, they get a three month wait and everything in here starts to slip. This is why almost no one meets their deadline. One way to counter this problem is to say, okay, I'm gonna meet chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. I'm gonna meet them at these points. This is what I do with my students. I make them put it in the diary and I make the day or two days, however long I think I'm gonna need for that chunk of writing. I mark that out in my diary six, 12 months in advance sometimes. Usually it's a six month schedule. And I say to the student, I need to have that by here. If I have that there, then I've got two days here and I will give it back to you on this date and you can move on. So I know that I am not the dependency problem. Now, I'm an experienced supervisor and this is what I do for a living is, you know, tell people how to do stuff. So. Um, a lot of supervisors don't work like this. They've got their own dependencies going on and you are but one in a list and they get you and they think, oh, maybe the weekend, oh, maybe I'll catch up, maybe I'll catch up. And honestly, if you're not a priority, this is where you slip. But let's go back to the book. So back in this finishing page, there's, there's a sort of two-stage feedback process. We've got an editor and we've got copy editor who are doing most of the work. Excuse me, I'm having some gardening work done. 
I didn't really um, anticipate that when I thought I'd um, do my video today. Um, so copy ed editor and copy editor. So you'll be working backwards and forwards with this person. So you're having to respond and then you're having to also chase up things like copyright permission, right? Um, and so you, again, you need to build in the copy editor is going to give you a chapter. When are you going to respond? If you don't set that time aside and that week where you know you can get something back from the copy editor and you set a week aside, if you don't diarise that week, you're pretty toast. You're not going to make it here. And at this stage, this is where publishers get pissed off because they've booked the factory. Okay, so usually they book the factory here. So they assess the state of your manuscript and they realise how much copy editing and they expect you to be highly responsive here so that you deliver here. And this, this phase, this is... Um, exactly where so many dependencies um, figure into whether you're going to meet this deadline or not. So I hope this tool helps you get a bit more of a, well, you don't have to go to this level, but sometimes it can be helpful to just do this in actually in retrospect mm -hmm. to work out what's happened. And this is all about learning how to forward plan. So next time you go to write a book and your co-writers say, oh, I'm sure we can get that done by March you know, because you've mapped all this, that actually it's going to take you a lot longer than that. Because the actual writing, often the smallest part, the labour of writing, not the biggest part of most of these sort of projects. It's managing this to and fro. So I hope this helps.